old recycled talk uh, I first gave like four years ago. Uh, but you were asking for lightning talk, so there we go. Uh, usually I do a demo, but I won't have time here and I don't have sincere hardware for that. So it's about uh, system tap and uh, the bastard operating system, uh, the bastard operating, the bastard operator from L uh, discovering system tap. So uh, who is the bastard operator from L? Uh, is a supposedly fictional character uh, from uh, some guy called Simon Travaglia. He wrote a lot of stories involving system tap, BOFH. Uh, and uh, that's someone who, uh, that's a basically a Unix admin who enjoys abusing his users. Uh, so, typical examples are, you know, resistance to communication of his users or enforce stupid restriction. Uh, the, the typical story is like the user calling the, the BOFH, like, I'm running out of space on my home directory. And it's like, okay, no reason. Is it better? That's going to be a pain. Uh, okay, so. The typical example of the BOFH is like the user calling the, the BOFH and saying, hey, I'm running out of space on, on my home directory and uh, can you do something about it? And yeah, yeah, I'm right on it. And uh, you just remove all the file of the user and problem solved. Right? So, but with system tap, you can do more subtle, annoying thing. Uh, so what is system tap? Uh, who, who knows what is system tap and how it works? Almost everybody. I'm not going to describe system tap in much detail. Uh, who has actually used system tap before? Oh, good. And who has his name is in the system tap channel? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Disappointing. Uh, <laughs> and I don't even work at Google. Uh, so yeah, system tap is a you know system wide code injection tool. Uh, so if you were in the security, security conference, so you could call it a rootkit framework. Uh, <laughs> and this presentation is about turning it into a rootkit framework and show, showing some use case. Uh, so you know, the, the, the BFH uh, just got a new, to, uh, new toy. Uh, yeah, what I'm going to describe here is, you know, I'm not actually breaking any security. Is root already, he already does whatever he likes. Uh, just system tap makes things much easier for some some things. Uh, so yeah, let's see some examples. So uh, this one is you know user land injection. Uh, so you know about uh, purple, lib purple is uh, IM so instant messaging library uh, that's used in uh, what's the name? It Pigeon among other things I think. Uh, so it supports IRC, uh, Jabber. Uh, MSN, ICQ for people who still use that kind of stuff. Um, so there's one function in the so the, f the function in the lib purple code is the pur purple conversation write function. So you can see the the prototype there. So if we who can do that, uh, we get pretty much all the conversation on the system uh, that goes through lib purple. So if you if you go and write a system tab script that looks like that, so we we inject into the the library the lib purple library uh, the, with the, the name of that function, uh, and we just print f uh, woo and the message. So that's the argument to the the function, and you you get uh, you get to see everything the users are talking about on your system, uh, which is pretty cool because. So it's not a lot of code to write. <coughs> Another example, uh, oh, what am I doing for time? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so you, you can also just look at, you know, what's going on in your pseudo terminal. So typically on SSH, you want to see what the user are doing on SSH. Uh, so just a function in the kernel uh, called pty write where Everything that gets written to a PTY goes through, I think. Uh, from system tab, you, you can see what it looks like with, you know, stop dash uppercase L and the thing. So that's all the argument you get access to. 
So of course, what you want is to, you know, uh, you probably want to look just at one specific PTY, so you need to, to filter on the TTY argument and printf buff depending on the count. So that's that's how you do it in system tab. Uh, so you inject in PTY, well, at the when you enter PTY right, and the, uh, at one is the the first uh, the first argument of, of the stab script stringified. So you compare it to the TTY name, and if it matches, you just print what's going on. Easy. Uh, so you know, uh, snooping on a term on a terminal is not something new, but doing it like four lines of code. Uh, well, code is, I, I don't know any way to do it more uh, concisely. More? So, uh, oh yeah, that one is nice. Uh, you, so there's a function in the kernel called uh, may open. That's in the name, I think, in FS. And whenever you try to access a file, that uh, the kernel goes through in there to, to check if you have permission to open the file. Uh, so what you could do is, you know, in system tab, you you inject the return of the function, actually. You check if it's not root, because I don't want to you know, mess with myself, just with the user. And if we should return that it's okay, you know, return zero would be like, you are allowed to open the file. And if in the file you have dot .mp3, the file name, you can just say, okay, actually replace the return value with minus 13, which is access denied. Uh, and that's, that can be very confusing if you yeah, see it. all the permissions are right and stuff. But it's, it's, I cannot uncat it and you rename it and it works. Uh, Uh, yeah, keylogger. Uh, this one was a bit more tricky because you test. Why does it work again? <coughs> so you have this table in the kernel uh, that matches uh, key codes to the name of the keys. So uh, and there's the function kbd event. You you can hijack and from there you can. You can look up the, the key code into this table. Uh, now retrieving the address of this table is a bit of a pain. So what I did is actually did in uh, you use uh, proc call sims, which has the address of the, the table, uh, and uh, you know a bit of all. You pass that at the into the stab script. Uh, that ends up in there, the last one. That ends up in the decode key function I wrote here. So that just look up in the table and do the conversion. So in when you whenever you enter KBD event and the event type is one and the value is one is probably mean you know it's an actual key, it's clearly personal. You look up what the key code, the event code means, and you just print what's going on with it. Okay, uh, so the <laughs> The, the, the first time I gave this talk, one guy was like, but can you hide system tab with system tab? Because when your system tab is running, it's very obvious. You, you can see in PS there's tab, and there's a module called tab, some blob. Uh, so yeah, of course you can hide system tab with system tab. Uh, so that's a bit ugly, but basically the list of modules that are loaded uh, are in a, in a linked list. So who wrote a, a function in, you can write C in system tab, so you can inject C code directly in the kernel, so you can just mess with the linked list or you just move the, mo the, the any module that looks like stop aside whenever you enter the, um, so yeah, whenever, you know, you list the modules that are loaded by looking in proc modules or LS mod, which looks into proc modules, and that goes through M start. So whenever you enter in M start, which takes the logs for us, so we don't, you know, you know it's safe. You can, uh, and actually, yeah, so it's uh, not when we enter. That's two lines within the function. So after we got the log, uh, we can move uh, the modules into some list on the side, 
and uh, in M stop you do the opposite. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Link about uh, if you want all the scripts that are out there. Uh, my email address is there. That's all documentation about system top. Questions? We don't have time.